parting then. So I thought we'd start with some vocabulary. That is a weak point of birth. Start with an easy Hi. one. You know how to read this guy? That is Kawa. Perfect. <laughs> River. Do you know this one? This one's a little bit harder. That is uh, alleyway. Good guess. Good guess. It's not. So alleyway actually has earth in it. This has the kanji for mud and stick. Which mud is thief, apparently. Hmm, thief. You know what thief is? Good guess. Dobutsu is actually animal. This is actually do, do, oh. do, 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 do. Do you know what this one up here is? That is mm -mm, something we. Mm, yeah, some just, kind of. No. It's like a just, dark. No, that's the wrong one. No, Magician is wizard. This is dark or dim. Karai. Good guess. It's kurai. Karai is spicy. Mm. Kurai is dark and dim. So. You know what nagareru means? That is to stretch long or That's to a good flow. guess. Uh, it is to flow, yes. To stretch would be a different verb, like nogasu, with a no. Um, so yeah, nagareru is to flow. Um, what's this word in the middle again? Mm. That is doroboro. Dorobo. Bo. Dorobo. Stick. Um, do you know what this up here is? Dorobo. That is alleyway. Yes, it is. Let's How do you think alleyway. alleyway? Bottom part's mm -mm, pretty mm -mm. common. Do you know what this guy's normally pronounced as? It has two basic readings. One is chi. Hey. What's the other reading? Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, it's stick. Dojanai. Um, what is it? So one way this kanji is read is chi, like in chizu for map. Do you know another way this might be read? Chizu. Or... Is it zoo? Yeah. Um. So, um, the chi z actually doesn't really turn into z. That's not something we they make in Japanese. Instead, it turns into g, right? So zu, right? <clears throat> zu turns into zu with the u sound. Zu. So chi with the e turns into g. So this right here is G. So G chi into G. G. And the first one right here is Ro. Roji. How do you say thief in Japanese? Roji. Mm. Dorobo. Hi, and how about dim and dark? That's kurai. Hi, kurai. Perfect. How would you say a magician known as Khan or Khan or defining a magician as Khan? A magician known as Kon. Kon to you, Majitsushi. Perfect. Can you read this sentence for me? That is Dorobo to you, Dorobo. Hi. Do you know what this kind of grammar point is telling us? So, magicians define as magicians. So, Hi. all magicians. Yeah, so in this case, Dorobo actually means thief, while Majutsusi. Majutsusi is the word that means magicians. So right here, Majutsusi. 
That's magician and durable is thief. But you knew the grammar, so that was the most important part of that question. Kusumu, we're going to see as kusunda to mean to be dark. So kusumu is will be dark. Kusunda is what? It kusumu is to be dark. Kusunda is to be dark. Hi. So if we say kusumu, is the item dark already or will it be dark? It is, is the, the item. item currently dark. So no matter what the item, we are talking about an item becoming dark with this verb, right? To be dark. The difference is which one of these is talking about an item currently being dark, as in right now. Mm. Kusume. That's a good guess, but it's not. This is because dictionary form is future tense. So this oh. means it will be dark. It's not currently dark, but it will be dark. So if you want to say an item is dark, you actually do the past tense for this verb rather than ing. It's saying it is already turned dark. Kusunda, making it is dark. So it's a little bit Sunda. of an exception because you normally it'd be kusunde iru to insinuate current tense but that's not how this specific verb works. <clears throat> okay. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence over here for me? Good guess. This right here is from Michi, which is pa, but when it's married, it becomes do. It's a different kanji, but it's same reading. So we got do. Then this we have right here. That's a good guess. It's actually pronounced as se. So seki rather than saki. Mm -hmm. So seki. Hi. Do you know what a mado seki is? Magical rock. Yes. Specifically, it is a rock that guides magic. Kind of like a wand, right? Wands in most stories are conduit they guide magic spells when you put it in different positions that is what a madoseki is mm. it is a magical guiding rock rock that guides magic um so what happened here we're describing a madoseki as what so madoseki nisunda so the magical or the wand Becomes dark. Hmm, we're dark. Oh, so Nusumu. Nusumu. Hi, hi, hi. So I'm going to go back for a second. Mm. This right here, Kusumu, is will be dark. Hi. Nusumu, super similar. The difference is that this one starts with a nu, not a ku, is will steal. So, what does this kanji start with? Nusumu. Hi, Nusumu. So, this is um, will steal or did steal, was stolen. Um, the kanji here is kind of fun because we have tsugi, which is next, and sara, which is plate. So, you're so hungry, so you steal the next plate. Oh. Okay, so what happened to this magical song? So the magical or the one was stolen from Oketo of Majitsushi. Yes. The, the wizard or magician. Yep. The magical stone was stolen from the pocket of the magician. Perfect. How would you say fog that is dark? We're talking about a relative clause here as marked by that. This is a magical stone that was stolen. So how would you say fog, which is kiri, mm -hmm. that is dark with kusumu? Mm -hmm. Fog that is dark. So kusumu would become that is dark. Kusunda Hi. kiri. Perfect. Kusunda kiri. So now I want you to say fog that is dark 
flows from the river. How would we say that? Flows from what the river. Add to here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> flows from the river. We could put behind all of that. We would put flows from the river. So Nagare do. And then Kawa no Nagare do Kusunda ki. So just letting you know, verbs do not like to touch each other in dictionary form. So this nagare do cannot go directly above kusunda in the form it currently is. Mm. You could put this in te form. Te form makes it okay for verbs to touch. So kawa no nagarete kusunda kiri is fog that is dark that flows of the river. Like it flows on the river would be how I would interpret this. So we have fog that's flowing on the river and is dark. That's not really mm -hmm. what our goal was. We want it from the river. So the fog's probably no longer in the river. You know what from is in Japanese? It is kara. So, so you want to use kara, which is from. Kawa kara nagarete kusunda kiri. That is kiri, that is fog, that is dark, flows from the river. This is grammatically <clears throat> correct. And does actually make sense for the sentence. Um, this is would not have the comma where I have it over there, kind of. So this wasn't like the goal I wanted you to make, but this is grammatically correct, and this is a perfectly fine way to say the sentence. Um, I didn't. Mm -hmm. My goal was to do um kawa ga, sorry kiri ga, kawa kara, oops, kawa kara. This is was what my goal was. Do you see how these are very similar? Do you? Okay. Kusunda kiri ga kawa kara nagareru. So what this is is that we got fog flows from the river, and then we're just describing fog as that is dark. This over here is a definitely 100% grammatical. You will see this type of formation in Japanese. And all it is is just fancy. Mm -hmm. So what you did was fancier than the one below. One below is like oh. default. Um, this is basically says it flows from the river and is dark, this fog. So we have a little and in here. This one doesn't have <clears throat> and. So yeah, both are good. Um, This kawa, the sentence can also be rearranged like um this so all three of these are basically the same there's no real difference in meaning um except for the first one adds a and to the sentence so basically it flows from the river it flows from the river and is a dark fog would be how i would translate the first one maybe if i wanted to be mm. like, direct but same things are going on so basically the same so yeah Good. Um, you went full relative clause. Um, can you read this sentence for me? So that is it has chi. So so so, so and chi's in the second position, which mm. increases the chance of it getting rendaku. Let's see if that happens. What happens to chi? It is alleyway. No, so, so, it is alleyway. I'm just saying we're adding the 10, 10 marks. Chi. So rather than chi, it's actually pronounced oh, as G. Yes, a little G. Nice. Um, oh, for whatever reason, Chi is a little bit um weird as far as the writing. By traditional, whenever as rendaku, it's almost always written as G for some reason. <laughs> More often than it is, I think, written mm. with Chi with rendaku. But that's just like a weird exception for writing um, for that specific letter. But the pronunciation of these two characters are the same, which is where that comes from. 
and you can't really guess how to write it. So yeah, it's Roji, it's alleyway. So yeah, let's continue reading. Roji, do you? Roji, what? Matsu. Matsu something yummy. Matsu. Right. So this word up here was that dim word we saw earlier today. It sounds a ku. lot like spicy. Makurayami. Yeah, just start with ku. Yep. Kurayami. So makurayami. Kurayami. Okay. Any guesses mm. what makurayami might mean? Makurayami. So yummy is dark. Ku, ku. just the whole word means dark, kind of. Kura. So kura. Kurayami is totally dark. Yeah. So ma is completely right. Kurai is dim and yami is darkness. So literally it is dim darkness that is completely dim. It's darkness that is completely dim. Uh, so in other words, it's super duper dark. Oh. It's a fancy way to say super dark. So we got darkness that is super duper dark. Um, what is super hmm. duper dark? Uh that would be roji to you roji. So all rojis or all alleyways are super yeah. dark. Perfect. Here's a new word. This is a color. Can you read it for me? Hairo. Hairo. Which is gray or ashes. Yes, it is gray, the color of ashes. Perfect. So this thing right here, this little me down here from Nagarekomi, this is a and. Just a generic and. Um, komu, mm. I forgot to tell you, this adds into meaning to the verb. So nagareru is to floor. Nagare komu is to flow into. So let's go read the line from the book. Toa kara kusunda hairo no kiri ga nagareru or nagare komu or komi komi etto roji toyu roji wa akuyami hai so let's start with the first class kawa kara kusunda hairo kiri ga nagare komi from nagare komu. It's the mi conjugation from mu. So adding e is making it into and. Kawa kara kusunda. Oh, I'll start from the end. Um, so our main thing is kiriga nagare komu. And... The and would be at the end of the sentence Hi. in English. Mm. So the river flows mm. and let's look at the particle. So we got ga with kiri and kara or kawa. Hai. So who's doing the nagareru? Who's doing the nagare komu? The kiri or the kawa? The kawa. Sadly, no. So particles are very important. Kara. As mm -hmm. a particle means from. From is never going to be like the doer. Like you don't really say from Sam, she punches me, right? That That's not grammatically correct. Mm. I mean, I guess you say from Sam, I receive a punch. Like like you could like rearrange things for that. But that's not really not got to do. I got to call me the flow into. So if I say from river flow into, that's not saying the river is doing the flowing. Right? From the river flow into. Right. That's the starting location of the flowing. So ga is marking the action here, the person doing the flowing, the which is mist or fog, any of these words. Um, the reason why it's ga and not wa, um and, or not o, there's, there's a lot of different particles you can choose for um things. This has to do with what makes the most sense. So if you use all, that insinuates somebody made the fog flow. 
that's not going on here. So we can't use O. No one's making fog. Fog's just flowing. So since the fog is doing the flowing yeah. and that's just what's happening, we're using ga by uh, default. Uh, wa as a subject marker insinuates intent. I'm going to say for now, kind of, with, with actions. So yeah, we use ga here. Kiri ga nagare komu. So that means fog is flowing into from where? Where is the fog starting? So, kiri ga nakare komu. So the fog is flowing right. from the river. So, so. And then we have some descriptors of that fog. It is a kusunda kiri, and it's also a hairo kiri. Hmm. Mm. So it's a dark and grayish mist. Yes. Perfect. So from the river, a dark and gray mist flows into, is what it says. What it flows into has been dropped from this first sentence and is insinuated by the second half of the sentence, which is roji. Roji is kind of our um, mm. main important information here, the alleyway. So basically the first sentence here, the first clause is saying, from the river, the dark gray flog flows into the alleyway. Because alleyway was dropped from that area because it's already in the second area. So what's the second clause of the sentence? Hmm. So all alleyways are super, super dark. Yep. So since we're connecting these with an and, it says, from the river, the dark gray fog flows into the alleyways, and all the alleyways are completely dark and di super duper dark. Mm. Do you know what a machi is? Is it road or path? Or it's like traces Good guess, good guess. Well. So machi, with this specific kanji, is a town or city. Machi. So. so hibiku is a verb that means to echo or will echo or echoes habitually. Hibiku. Which what's really fun okay. about hibiku is that do you recognize that kanji right there? Uh, it looks like that train kanji. Oh, well, back. A little bit. But what I really want you to look at is that that is oto. Oto is sound, not oto san. Oto san has chichi. Oh, sorry. Oto san. Now I'm like confused. Is it u? Oh, oto san with an u. Here's oto san. Oto san. Right. Totally different kanji. This is why it's nice to learn kanji. This right here is oto. Oto is sound. Sound. So, so hibiku to echo has sound inside of it because sounds are what's echoing. Can you read this for me? Machi wa hibiku. Hi. You know what this means? A uh, town is echoing. Yeah, basically. The town echoes or the town will echo. So this word right here has oto in it. Mono oto. Any guesses what this might mean? Mono oto? Sound thing. Yep. It's like frequency or something? Nope, it's just sound of things. Oh. Mono oto. So we probably would just translate this mono as oto. sound in English. It's like not really separate between mono oto and just oto. But literally, it's like the sound of things. Things make sounds. Mono oto. So I want you to say the town echoes with sound. What particle do you think we'd use? Town echoes with sound. Mm. There's no intent. Hi, hi. So it should be ga. Correct. Perfect. Nice. Machi wa mono oto ga hibiku. Perfect. Can you read this word for me? 
Suteru. Hi, this is to throw away, like to throw away your garbage. Suteru. Suteru. Hi, so we got like a hand, and we got a little like box right here. That's this right here, this thing. That's everything you're throwing away. Suteru. Do you know this kanji? Uh, miru. Hi, miru, to look at. Can you read this new word for me? It's a compound verb. Uh, misuteru. Hi, misuteru. 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 So this is a look at something misuteru. and throw it away. This is a little bit metaphorical uh. to mean to forsake. You look at it and mm. you're like, hmm, that's garbage. <laughs> Just by looking at it. So to forsake something is mi suteru, which is a do verb. So passive form, which means the subject's not doing the verb, the verb is being done to the subject. In Japanese, it's a form of conjugation. In English, we just move everything around. So like, uh, rather than I throw a ball, a ball was thrown at me. Or something like that. Mm. Maybe it's the opposite. Uh, I throw a ball. The ball was thrown. Yeah, the ball was thrown would be passive form. So we like move things around. So with do verbs, all we do is drop the do and add radedu. So idu to exist becomes iradedu. So what is how does forsake turn into to be forsaken? Misuteraredu. Yep, misuteraredu. Perfect. To be forsaken. Can you read this for me? Machi wa misutereru. What does this mean? Which means the town was forsaken. Perfect. So we see this kanji a couple of times. It meant town or city. You know what it what how it's pronounced? So. Machi. Hi, machi. So our next word, wabishi, is an E adjective that means wretched, which is basically like sad. As like a basic way of mm. writing that. I mean, like I feel like you know what wretched means, but it's such a big word. I just want to find that something else. Wabishi. Wabishi. <laughs> Do you know what the ta form of e things that end in E are? Wabishi. You know what that turns into? Uh, wabishi, no, wabishi shite, wabishi shite. That's a really good guess. Wabishita. Wabishita. That would be a really good guess. So you could possibly do something like that by putting wabishi into an adverb, like wabishku shita or wabishi ni ta, something weird like that. But that's not something anybody speaking, naturally speaking Japanese would say. Instead, for the past tense form of wabishi, which is an adjective, we delete that final E sound, that's an E adjective, and add katta. Wabish katta. Huh. So katta is the past Wabish tense katta. thing of anything that ends with E. Wabish katta. Can you read this for me? Machi. Machi wa wabish katta. Hi. You know what that means? Mm. The town was sad. Yeah, it was wretched. It was sad. Perfect. So right now it is our halfway point. So I'm going to stop sharing um, our lesson with you. And I'll see you in two seconds.